Three, two, one, go. Over 68,000 competitors threw down worldwide as the 2012 CrossFit Games got underway last week. Seven minutes of pure torture delivered an unexpected dose of burpee fever as the epidemic went global in the first workout of the Open. We break down the bump and jump, tally some amazing numbers, and profile the top competitors. The CrossFit Studio Update is next. Deep breath. Week one is over and done with, except for the crying. Outside of some very sore muscles and some damaged egos, we made it through unscathed. And most of us will never likely look at the burpee the same way again. Hello, I'm Rory McKernan. Welcome to the CrossFit Games Update Show. I'm joined by Pat Sherwood and Miranda Oldroyd. Guys, talk about some impressive numbers. After Sunday, the final count on open participation for individuals up 175%. We are all competing against 68,825 other CrossFitters. It's incredible. And while the largest share of those CrossFitters are here in the U.S., this has truly become a global competition with 84 countries participating in the Open. That could be really impressive or not, depending on how many countries <laughs> there are. Know. I don't even know how many there <laughs> are. So, Pat, last week you put out the call for affiliates to opt in. They met that call. Were you surprised by the results? I was pleasantly surprised. And thank you guys all out there for, for chiming in. Nearly 80% of the 3,700 CrossFit affiliates worldwide joined in, making this the largest participatory event in CrossFit's history. With amazing community, Very cool. fantastic. The number, though, that strikes fear into my heart and makes me shake in my shoes, after, especially after doing the first workout <laughs> two times, <Oof>. okay. <laughs> 5,666,826. That is the total number of burpees that were submitted to the leaderboard in workout number one probably safe to say that's the most burpees ever done in the world yeah that's, I think that's crazy safe. and Very i think safe. you did what you did like six or seven right I, well, it's, it's a team effort we're all in there we're all, <laughs> i competed <laughs> okay more on workout one in a minute but looking ahead at today's show we've got ben bergeron of crossfit new england to discuss changes in the team competition format and later an exclusive update on some big names you'd ordinarily expect to see in this year's individual men's competition but first let's get the goods guys talk about an unexpected workout we heard a great amount of bitching when this thing was mm -hmm. released, and I gotta say, it certainly had its ups and downs. <laughs> yes, very, very well said, and uh, of course, there's a lot of bitching, a lot of complaining, largely by people that don't enjoy burpees. Nobody does. I'm, I'm in that crew as well. Uh, the workout crushed me, but some of us actually did well. You crushed the workout. Congratulations. Oh, well, thank you. I'm the fittest person at this desk at this moment <laughs> in time. That is true. But I have to tell you that I did it on Thursday, and I'm still sore. So. Oh, I don't blame you. I personally <laughs> feel like I was in a, a hellacious fight with the ground for about seven minutes, and I did not win. I was the loser. <laughs> Seriously. See, I felt like this was a personal attack on big people, right? It was like a bad fat joke for seven minutes the whole time. <laughs> why, uh, why the burpee? Why seven minutes? This is crazy. Yeah, you know, it's a beautiful, simple little workout, and it's stung. It's stung really bad, but for a purpose. We need to remember, you know, where are we going with the Open? It's the road to select the fittest individuals to go and compete at the regional level. And when I actually, when I saw this workout for the first time, I had a laugh. Because what would CrossFit competition be if not shocking mm -hmm. and pissing some people off? I thought it was a beautiful way to start and kick things off this year for the Open. Of course you did, Miranda. That's because you, <laughs> exactly. you did well. <laughs> Had it been something else, I think we would have heard a different story. Anyways, CrossFit's co-director of the CrossFit Games and head judge Adrian Bosman shared their thoughts on Workout One from Cookville, Tennessee, where they were visiting last year's champ, Rich Froning. Anyone can do it. Anyone in the world can do this workout. These are all the burpees. And I think it's a simple and effective task. It's like, why run 400 meters? It's a great display of your heart. For some people, you get into it and you're like, geez, I just want to slow down or I want to quit. And uh, others are just like, I'm going to fight and stay with it. Every division for this after this week one of the Open can be and will be measured against each other. Granted, the very fastest times might come out of little guys, but the best CrossFitters are still up there. A couple of very salient points from Dave that stand out for me. First of all is that, yes, we are trying to test for the fittest person on earth, but we're still trying to make this competition available to everyone. Absolutely, and it's tough to think of a workout that's better suited and with a lower barrier to entry than 12.1 is. You need no equipment, you can do it absolutely anywhere. Mm -hmm. I also thought it was really cool to have everybody across the different divisions, men, women, masters, all doing the exact same prescription. So then you can kind of start to compare people Absolutely. across divisions too. For example. And, uh, well, I might have an example okay. prepared. Spencer Hendel, great games athlete, probably not a big fan of the burpee. Got <laughs> 124 not. reps, which is impressive. Very. However, he would be currently placed sixth in the masters women 45 to 49 
category. Why are you, why are you always <laughs> hating on the big guy? Sorry, always Spence. hating on the big guy. You might want to throw up a red flag and say, hey, this is for the smaller guys. This is the only people that are going to do well in this workout. But then you see people like Jason Kalipa, a bigger athlete, Annie Thor's daughter on the woman's side of the house, who are putting up astronomical numbers of burpees. Right? Let's take a look at some of those numbers now. As if you guys have not all been leaderboarding in all of your spare time, we're going to take a closer look. First place is not just about bragging rights and placement anymore. There's a cool $2,012 on the line for the top man and woman with video proof. Pat, talk to me about this new face, Mr. 161. Yes, Danila Shokin out of Russia. How cool is that? I mean, that's the whole point of the Open, right? Let's find some new faces, some new people that are amazing athletes. This guy did 161 fully legit reps of burpees. He destroyed it. Kind of came out of nowhere, kind of like Nico Salo in 2009. I don't know if he'll go as far as Nico did, but he has the potential. But as of right now, he is 60,000 ruples richer. Oh, you even converted. <laughs> yeah, no problem. You know, I do what I can, and that's, that's super cool. And he's obviously dominating the leaderboard thus far for 12.1, but let's check out the rest of the leaders and see who's doing what. The only name that jumped out at me that I recognized from the Open last year, Jarrett Perlmutter out of Rick CrossFit is doing exceptionally well. And another fact that I noticed is two or three burpees made a really big deal in your standing. There's a lot of tight races. Yeah, uh, one of Brick's other athletes here we'll talk about in a second, but Mer, what I really like is that every single athlete in week number one can be compared against one another. The prescription was exactly the same for men and women. So talk to me about the leaders of the ladies' competition. Uh, have you done Have you done any calculations yourself to see where you would why, why, lie in the this women's is not competition? About it's not about me. <laughs> All right. Like you said, uh, the $2,012 does not just go to the top affiliate validated score, but you need video proof. So on the women's side of the house, that's going to go to second place, Andrea Ager, also of Brick CrossFit, did 141 reps. Yeah, legit. And, and uh, guys, the bottom line is video your efforts if you think you're going to do well. And do me one small favor, take your iPhone flip it sideways, right? These, these guys are too hard to watch <laughs> when you're up and down. And uh, since you asked, Miranda, if I was a woman mm -hmm. and I was between 50 and 54, I'd be Ooh. sitting comfortably in seventh place. Nice. Uh -huh. nice. That unfortunately drops down to 36 if I was between the ages of 45 and 49 <laughs> and still a woman. <laughs> I don't want to talk about that. Now, for the top 10 for the women, it's a little bit different for the guys. Some new names for sure as well, but three very recognizable names from last year's games and previous games competition even before that. Kristen Clever, 2010 champ. 143 reps gets the top spot <laughs> and Julie Fouché and Annie Sakamoto also made the top 10 with 135. Good lord. The ladies are crushing it and like we said on, on the men's leaderboard some more unknowns but let's check in with the people that we do know and see how they're doing. As of right now Rich Froning Jr., the 2011 Games Champion, got 141 reps that puts him in 34th place. 2011 women's champ Annie T, 42nd place with 128 burpees. Jason Kalipa, 2008 champion, got 131 reps that big SO. He got 325th <laughs> place with that effort. Graham Holmberg, Graham, 2010 champion. I'm not picking on you, I'm just mm -hmm. doing my job. Mm -hmm. 122 reps, great score, but even that, um, uh, that amazing work puts him in 1,484th place. Unbelievable. And finally, as you said, Kristen Clever. 2010 ladies champion sitting pretty in first place 143 reps now Miranda mentioned this earlier and we have to recap it here because while that sounds crazy that Graham's over a thousandth place it's never been your performance in one workout that that dictated how successful you're going to be it's your performance across the entire set of workouts so five more or four more weeks to go in this competition we've got a long road ahead of us now in addition to awards for topping the leaderboard each week this year we've added a new prize the spirit of the open award each week the, of the Open, a participant will be recognized as the individual who best embodies the spirit of CrossFit, and they'll be awarded a cash prize of $2,012. If you have a nominee for the Spirit of the Open Award, send your entry to support at CrossFitGames.com. This award is absolutely fantastic. It's a great idea. It, it embodies everything that we all love about CrossFit, the community, pushing yourself, and just in general making people better. Mm -hmm. And this week's winner embodies exactly all of those things. A woman who has taken her strong will and love for physical training and applied it to her fight against breast cancer. Dr. Karn Marshall was an Olympic weightlifter and world champion in 1987. She set 60 American and world records and is the first woman in history to clean and jerk over 300 pounds. A world-class athlete who became a Wall Street professional 
Once she was exposed to CrossFit, she focused her competitive zeal on the CrossFit Games, and last July, she fought her way to sixth place in the finals of the Masters competition. But less than a month later, this longtime competitor, once known as the strongest woman in the world, would begin the toughest battle of her life. On August 22nd, I felt a lump uh, in my breast. And on August 23rd, I had a mammography and was told it didn't, it looked suspicious. And uh, from there, um, I went on for more diagnostic testing, biopsy and all the fun stuff you do. And uh, it was cancer um, and uh, breast cancer. And uh, so I went on to have, um, on September 23rd, I had a lumpectomy. Uh, it turned out to be what's called triple negative stage 2A breast cancer. And then I went on after I healed from that to radiation. And then uh, I just, then I went on to chemotherapy. And um, I had chemotherapy and I finished, my last round of chemotherapy was January 19th. Cancer and cancer treatment has a way of stopping you in your tracks and getting your attention and there's not much room for anything else. I was optimistic, I knew that you know, I was feeling good. They had told me that they didn't see any evidence that had spread to any of my lymph nodes, which I knew was a good sign. Um, so I, um, I was always optimistic <laughs> that I, I'd get through this. How did you uh, try and keep your spirits up during that time? Thinking about CrossFit, <laughs> thinking about just good stuff, you know, thinking about memories. Um, the chemo is the hardest part, you know, surgery and radiation, you get through. I trained as much as I could, you know, once everything was healed up, even through the radiation, you're a bit tired, but I would come to the gym and work out as much as I could. Um, the chemo stops you in your tracks for 10 to 12 days after a chemo. It's just this dark hole that you fall into, your brain shuts down, your body shuts down, and you know, you don't really, just getting up and taking a shower, I needed a two hour nap. <laughs> I would do the best I could for those 10 days to just uh, do what I could do. And then the last week, a week and a half, I would come to the gym and do what I could do. You know, it wasn't anything close to what I was doing, but I figured it's better than doing nothing. So I would try to um, push myself to do as much as I possibly could, to be as normal as I possibly could, thinking that that's just gonna help my body to be strong, as strong as possible. By then, it was announced when the Open was going to be, and by then I was like, okay, I'm going to start training as soon as I can. I knew that I needed 12 days, which is what it was. I started training on January 31st, and I'm like, every day what happens is I feel better, I feel stronger. I'm not 100%. I don't feel, you know, I'm not as strong. My endurance is down. I'm, I'm still, um, you know, I'm working as hard as I possibly can. Um, and. Uh, but my goal has been from, from throughout this is I'm going to try. I'm going to give it my all. I'm going to do what I can do. And if every week I'm stronger, then every week I'm going to be moving up that leaderboard. <laughs> a powerful story, an amazing competitor, both in and out of the box. You can see Karan's full story in the CrossFit Journal at journal.crossfit.com. Dr. Marshall, we're confident that you're going to come through on top. Thank you for being such an inspiration to the community. When we come back, coach of last year's team champions, CrossFit New England's Ben Bergeron. Stay tuned. CrossFit New England was founded in 2007 and has grown now to over 300 members. Traditionally, they've been one of the most successful affiliates in CrossFit competition, their last year's Affiliate Cup champions, and have competed in the game since 2009. 
Ben Bergeron is the owner of CrossFit New England, the team coach, and he competed on the team in 2010 and 2009. Ben, welcome to the show, brother. Hey, Rory. Good to see you. Hey, Pat. So first things first, burpees. Burpees. What do you think, man? Um, so my initial reaction was kind of like, like everybody like, what? That's right. it? Um, horrible. Horrible. <laughs> and seven minutes. So after getting over the shock factor a little bit sure. um, and maybe see a few athletes go through it, I started to like it a lot. So um, kind of like switched my thought process on it. Love the simplicity. Love that anybody, anywhere in the world can do it. Um, love that every single one of our members can do it. So in hindsight, I liked it. Every single one of your members could do it, including 11-year-old uh, Maya? 11-year-old uh, Maya. 11-year-old yes. Maya and your pregnant wife. Congratulations. Yes, You're soon you. to have another chi or a yes. child. How many and did Maya get? Maya got 87 reps. All right. Tell her I beat her. <laughs> <laughs> and then we actually saw Heather got, what, 70? Yes. Good Lord, and you set her up a deficit so her pregnant belly could actually uh, get there. pregnant, 70 burpees. Wow, wow, that should be a motivating factor for all you guys out there. Um, we've got you here to talk about teams. You've been pretty prolific in the team competition. There's some changes to the format this year. Any of those affecting you specifically? Well, I think the big one is the fact that affiliates can have multiple teams this year. I think that's the biggest change, um, and that's definitely changed kind of our dynamic within our gym. It's kind of expanded the competition to include everybody because now it's not just the top six eight or ten athletes mm -hmm. it's kind of everybody has a shot at being on that second team or at least contributing to the score of the second team right so two teams uh that's a unique approach that i haven't heard of yet you've got one that's essentially elite and then one that's everybody else uh, yes so we took our top 10 athletes and put them on team a and essentially put everybody else on team b with the hopes that anybody and everybody can kind of contribute every single week to that team B score. And we're literally calling them A team and B team? Yes. Okay, cool. I love it. How does, does that translate into the community at large? I mean, do, do, they, do they like it? Is that a, like kind of a rallying point or is it kind of set up uh, hierarchies in the gym? No, I think it's exactly what it is. I think it's a rallying point. Uh, last year, there was only team A, so it was already that kind of divide. As much as I don't like that, there sure. was a divide. But this year, because there's team B, it includes so many more people. And what we're seeing is that Athletes that we didn't think would be contributing are contributing to the score of Team B, which is unbelievable. You know, we have a, a, a soccer mom, Judy Donnelly, who got 104, 105 reps. Came back in the next day, super motivated, doing RX weight for the first time. The next workout is pretty, pretty motivating. Wow. Stuff. Yeah. All fired up. Unbelievable. I'm, I'm super familiar with the culture at your gym. Yes. Every time I walk in, it's like everyone in there is a competitor. So you said your top 10 are on the A team. How? What was the quality, you know, the, how did you choose who's going to be in those top 10? You've got a gym full of great athletes. Yeah, so we, we, I know a lot of other gyms use past competitions or they do a, um, before they have to announce a team, they'll do a, a tryout. Mm -hmm. We don't go that route. It's more, um, you know, I feel confident in my role as assessing the athletes and kind of as the, the captain or coach, whatever you want to call it, that I assign people to the teams. And um, okay. I just kind of use the last 365 days as the qualification, not one day or one you know, one right. specific entity. So the buck stops with you. Buck stops with me, and there's a reason for that. It's if you use one competition, mm -hmm. you can get athletes that are good at that one competition or that one workout or those one specific movements. Okay. So it'd be like having a um, you know a bunch of point guards on a basketball team. That doesn't make sense. You need the specialists. You need the strong person. You need the fast person or the metcon. You need the gymnastics person because there is workouts that you can put work with strengths. It's a little bit different than just being. You know, well-rounded. Having said, there's no substitute for the well-rounded. Sure, absolutely. So you've chosen your team. You know, you're big into programming, creating athletes. How is your team preparing? What's team preparation look like in New England? Um, last year, we we started like going, getting really close to the regionals and leading up to the team, uh, to the games. We trained a lot as a team. This year, we started that back in um, November, maybe in September. Okay. So from September on, we've been training five days a week essentially as a team. Wow. See, that's a commitment right there. That's why you guys do so well. Yeah. And uh, of those individuals, I mean, your team was comprised of some guys and girls who in the past have been amazing individual competitors. Um, are you guys geared exclusively towards teams now? Um, this year, yes. Okay. Yeah, this year, so la I mean, we've had, you know, my wife Heather, two-time games person, and James Hobart was in the games twice, and Mel Ockabee, who missed the games last year, was in first place right. in the region and had a massive hand issue with uh, those bars. Yes, I remember that. Yeah, <laughs> it was <laughs> unbelievable. Up, yeah. yeah. Um, but this year, it's like all for one and one for all, go team. You know, there's nobody that's looking individual. Um, and it's, I think it's a testament to the community. It's, yeah. it's unbelievable that that high level of athlete is foregoing kind of like 
the big spotlight of the yeah. individuals for the team. Yeah, and let's take that a step further. I'm not I'm not drawing a parallel with these people necessarily with CrossFit New England, but you've got other people in different regions, like highly competitive regions like the Southwest. Tommy Hackenbrook, second place in 2009, mm -hmm. an amazing athlete in one of the most competitive regions, uh, really, I, I would argue for men, the hardest uh, region to, come, to qualify from. Yep. So. Tommy's not going to a team. He's in a very difficult region. <laughs> so um, it's, uh, I know from the stuff I've read and seen that he's really focusing on his other athletes who have a very good shot of doing very well as individuals in the games. And if you're not 100% dialed in for your individual pursuit, it's a good other approach. Sure, same thing in, in South Central. The Central girls uh, from CrossFit Central, they went uh, last year, took every single spot on the podium. One's pregnant, one's moved away. But Carrie Kepler, third place in 2009, is choosing to go team this year as well. So do you think this is a trend maybe that we're going to see more of? It could be a trend or it could be just what's happening in our gym, yeah. you know, which is people see the value and the camaraderie of the team and they want to go be a part of that. Um, you know, having said that, it could be you know my region is too tough, I can't get to the games, or I have a better shot of getting to the games if I go team. I think it's kind of people weighing their own kind mm -hmm. of preferences on, on what they, they see as their best shot and what they see as they'll have the most enjoyment doing. And for sure, and there's also some monetary benefits as well, some cash and prizes, $30,000, you know, going to the top team, which when I had my affiliate, I could certainly have spruced the place up, get some more equipment, you know, with that amount of cash. You guys won. Where the, where'd the money go? What'd you do? Um, we took the money and we, uh, we gave every single one of the athletes their share and then we took uh, another partial share and gave it to our chiropractor and masseuse that came out to treat us during the games. Very smart. And that, Yes, keep them happy. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And then we, uh, we took another share as well and uh, we gave it away to a charitable foundation. Oh, very nice. cool. Yes. Very cool. So a lot at stake, uh, 800 more teams this year. Brother, good luck to you this Thank year. You. Really excited to see you guys compete. H how did you do on work on number one, by the way, as a team? Uh, as a team, I, I think we're like 200th in the world. Okay. So okay, so you climb back up. You gotta climb <laughs> back up. Only one of five. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Thanks again for joining us, and Thank we're you. really excited to see you compete. Coming up next, roster changes. Who's missing? Who's returning? Some big changes out there in the CrossFit world. We'll be right back. CrossFit Games <laughs> competitor, Daddy Peterson, doing WAD 12.1. One, two, three, four. Say that's from Coach Britt. Teaching me CrossFit kids. <laughs> Welcome back. If you've been paying attention to the leaderboard, or you took the time to comment on our first show, you've noticed a couple of the biggest names in CrossFit missing. The 2009 champion, Miko Salo, stands out the most to me. Absolutely. Miko is a real badass. He's probably one of the toughest guys in CrossFit. I'm still amazed at his 20-minute AMRAP of King Kong, and he once did 1,000 burpees in 82 minutes. 1,000 that breaks down to just over 12 burpees a minute for 82 minutes. I think he would have crushed this workout. At the 2009 games, he took second in the long run behind Spieler, which grabbed our attention, and then he proved his strength by pulling 19 out of 20 of the deadlift bars in event number two. Nico took home first place that year and followed it up with a fifth place finish in 2010. But last year, he caught a tough break when a wave burst his eardrum on the very first event. Amazingly, he completed the beach event in front of six other athletes, but the injury meant that his 2011 Reebok CrossFit Games were over. Good Money says that he would have been hungry this year. He was able to recover from the eardrum injury, but unfortunately, bad luck has struck again this year, and he will not be competing in 2012. Here's Miko with more on his current condition. Last training session in December at Combs, I felt a bit pain on my left knee. And I came back to Finland and went to doctor. It turned out that my knee is in pretty bad situation, my left knee. They made a surgery like in 20th of December. I can't do running or jumping like double unders or box jumps, so my decision was to not compete this year's games. I want to make sure that my knee will heal as perfectly as possible, considering the situation. I want to like already thank people 
who are in CrossFit community because of the great support they have given to me and I'm really like thankful for that and I, I don't know how I can give back the things that this community has given to me but one thing is that I want to be a trainer and help CrossFit HQ and help CrossFit Bori to spread the word of CrossFit and around the world. The thing for me in this life I love to do CrossFit but I have to take one day at the moment and see what happens. This really opens up the European region. Miko has dominated Europe since 2009, and also last year's winner of the European Regional has a shoulder injury and won't be competing this year either. So we're yeah. going to see some new faces out of Europe, obviously. Yeah, bottom line, we're going to see some, <laughs> some new male athletes coming from the European region. Now, Miko, you can't put your finger on one thing unless it's a trauma, but he's known for high volume. You think that has anything to do with the knee injury? High volume and also, who knows, you know, before CrossFit, he was a professional soccer player. Definitely plenty of knee stress in that sport. Sure. Now, more big news. 2011 second place runner-up Josh Bridges is also out of the competition. I know this is, this is terrible. I mean, he's got a good reason for it, but Josh was the only person really close to Rich Froning last year. He placed second in the games. He was first in the Southern California Regionals and second in the Open as well. Bridges is the whole package, the real deal. Unofficially, he got 150 reps on the first Open workout. He can run, he can swim, he's excellent at body weight movements, and however, for one of the smaller athletes, this guy can move some weight. This year, Josh is deployed with the U.S. Armed Forces. Through his coach, C.J. Martin at CrossFit Invictus, he had this to say. Due to my service obligations, my participation in the 2012 season is probably going to be limited to being the biggest fan I can be of the Invictus competitors and of the individual competitors that I have become friends with over the last year. I've made peace with not being able to compete this year. I knew after last year that I would be unlikely I'd be able to participate in 2012. It's a very tough pill to swallow, but I finally got on board and started my two-year training cycle with the 2013 games as my target. Anytime you have a serious contender like Josh, either move or not compete, it opens a spot for the other competitors. Here, Josh's absence makes a giant opening in the SoCal Regional, as well as for a top spot at the CrossFit Games. But as much as we'll all miss him, what can you say about a man who's serving his country? Man, stay safe, Josh. Let's go now to returning athletes. Some big names are staging comebacks. Their return is going to mix things up in their respective regions. One of my favorite competitors, they call him Commando Steve. He's, uh, he's the Australian biggest loser uh, celebrity personality down there. So Steve Willis is back out of Australia. He's been out of the game since 2009, but he's old school tough, and I gotta say I'm excited to see how Steve's gonna do this year. Absolutely. There is no doubt that Steve's return is going to be a game changer in the whole Australian region. Like you said, fourth in 2009, the Australian region has not seen an individual competitor do that well at the games since Steve. The big question is, is Steve going to be a little rusty after taking all that time off? Now, last year, the big name down in Australia was Pat Barber. Right. He has moved. He's with us here in NorCal. So we might see, with Steve's return, a podium finish from an Australian again. You couldn't agree with that more. You've got to give, you, well, you've got to give Steve credit. You've got to also say it has been three years, and we've seen people like Chris Hogan. Chris Hogan is now a three-year games veteran. He's continued to get better and better every single year. Speaking of former top dogs, I could not be more excited to announce 2009 female champion Tanya Wagner is going to be back this year as well as an individual. Absolutely. Tanya Wagner dominated in 2009. She won by a large margin. She was so far ahead in 2009 that the, all she needed to do in the last event was just finish it to be champion, which of course she did. She went team in 2010 and missed 2011 to have a baby. She's a seasoned competitor and there's no way she's not going to have a large impact. Yeah, Tanya, though, is in a difficult region. She's in the Mid-Atlantic region. She's going to have to beat athletes like Christy Phillips, Gretchen Kittleberger, just to get to the games. But I have no doubt, like you said, Tanya is a fighter, and I personally would love to see her at the games this year. Yeah, I mean, the games have certainly grown in her absence, but you can never count out a former champion. I mean, the history of sport is full of comebacks by ex-champions. It's been a crazy, crazy week. You can be sure that next week will be the same, Let's turn to the week ahead and work out two release tomorrow at 5 p.m. Pat, Miranda, let's talk about predictions. <laughs> All right, here's, here's my best guess. Oh We're going to see uh, we go. pull from the ground, deadlifts for the men, maybe 185 pounds like loading. It. Yep, uh, 135 for the ladies, paired with a double under. 
probably a double under first so that everyone can compete mm. and not too long of a time domain because it does it add up you know five to seven minutes again is this just wishful thinking and that is so specific i would love that <laughs> i would love that please unders. this is the pat share with special miranda i don't know maybe like a 16 and a half minute amrap ghd sit up i have no idea i like what you're <laughs> no it doesn't sound fun at all but everybody could compete <laughs> i don't care what it is as long as it's not burpees no matter what it consists of we'll be right here with you for pat and miranda i'm rory mckernan See you next Tuesday. See you, Auntie. Yeah, I know. Yeah, I know. Right? Yeah. Uh -huh. You don't even have the ear piece. No, I took it out. Your arms Long. look very, uh, <laughs> very inflated. All right, Thanks chunks. <laughs> <laughs>